So Mick, with your perspective in this region, now that Iran is effectively at war, actively at war with Israel, where does that leave the U.S.? We say our support for Israel is ironclad. Well, that's right, Wade. It is ironclad. And I do think we will do everything we can to defend Israel, our, uh, our, our partner, our ally in the region, our primary ally in the region. Uh, that will include, of course, needing to pass support uh, for uh, Israel in the House, uh, in the Senate right now. I think that's going to be one of the first steps. The second step is we've already seen uh, Central Command shifting more resources to the region. That's likely going to increase. That's what the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is there for. He determines the threat and he moves assets from different theaters. I think we're going to see a lot more military assets, even though we already have a substantial amount, but a lot more showing up to try to get this back contained and then hopefully de-escalated by showing that force by that deterrent effect. Now, while, while our forces are there in a supporting role, they're helping to, to intercept some of these projectiles. What happens if something goes wrong? Obviously, the risk is incredibly high. We have thousands of personnel in the region. If Americans are, are, are killed somehow, uh, God forbid, hopefully it, it does not happen, at least in this latest escalation. But obviously, our military is calculating that and what our response would be, and how could something like that play out or escalate throughout the area? Well, one way is we have a lot of forces in the region. As we know, they've been attacked over and over and over again by Iranian proxies in Syria and Iraq specifically, and then we lost some soldiers in Jordan. So they are in vulnerable positions. Now, it's clear to me that the Pentagon uh, sent uh, assets to the region to, to shore them up, to strong point their locations. That is probably the biggest risk right there, because the proxies can then, uh, obviously, at Iran's direction, start launching attacks near nonstop against those uh, those bases, uh, and, and sometimes they get through. That's the thing. If you have enough uh, drones coming at you, even a substantial uh, air and missile defense system like the Iron Dome or like the Patriot can eventually be overwhelmed if it is if it is a swarm type effect. So that's the biggest threat in the region. There's no doubt the Pentagon and Central Command is looking at that right now and doing everything they can to address it. And for our viewers, a lot of this may be watching. A lot of people may be watching and say, "Well, this is concerning, but this is all over there uh, in that part of the world." What about the increased threat? level here in the homeland because obviously tensions are running high we've seen the protests we've seen the heightened alerts here across the u.s what could that do for threats here at home well you're absolutely right we've already seen the threat level go up substantially because of the war in gaza this potential potential and we we have to wait to see how big the impact is and the Israeli response, but potential for this being a regional conflict would also spur a lot of radicals uh, to try to take the opportunity to fight the West, uh, whether it's Europe, obviously Israel, and the United States. So this does substantially increase the terrorist threat, especially if it escalates into a regional conflict. Mick Mulroy, thank you so much for your time this evening. We appreciate it.